Uh, Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So most of you would have heard of DSTAR, DMR or even System Fusion along with NXDN. But have you heard of M17? Now the problem with DSTAR, DMR and Fusion is they require some form of licensing to be able to experiment and modify. And while they have a place in the ham radio market, they're not really in line with the spirit of ham radio, where we like to tinker and build wild gadgets like a mad scientist in our basements. So this is where M17 comes in. And although it's been around a little while now, it's forever growing and expanding, attracting new members to the M17 community. So what's special about M17? Well, the M17 voice mode uses the free and open Codex 2 encoder meaning there are no licensing or legal barriers to stop you building or modifying your equipment to incorporate M17. Now this brings freedom to build, understand and innovate, which is core to amateur radio. Yep, I nicked that line from the front page of the M17 project website, but it's so true. Now while most digital modes rely on internet linking, M17 also supports this feature, through the use of special dedicated M17 reflectors. Now big systems such as Freestar and Hubnet have already implemented M17 into their network. And while there are no off the shelf M17 transceivers currently, it means there's only one thing left to do. Learn how to either modify your own radios or build something yourself. Of course, there are pieces of software out there which are multi-platform like Droidstar, which enables you to connect to any of the M17 reflectors from the comfort of your own home or via your mobile device. Well, as long as you've got an internet connection. And um, that's not software design, but yeah, yeah, it says on the optional cost of putting filters in. Uh, <laughs> I haven't bothered putting your filters in. So anyway, all right, there you go. You don't get a walk for now from G1 and the G Clearing and let's call on 2350 and listen for any final. Now this video is more about hardware. What hardware can we currently use to take advantage of the M17 protocol? So first up is module 17. Now this is a smart mic module that plugs into a 9600 board capable radio. If you're unsure if your radio is compatible, just look at the rear connections. For example, on my FTM300, I would use this port to connect to the module 17. You then plug a speaker mic into the module 17 and use that to use M17 via RF via your radio. Now I'm hoping to have one of these sent to me real soon. And of course I'll make a video specifically on this product once it arrives. Now module 17 runs the open RTX firmware, which we'll talk more about later as it can be used in other devices too. Now currently the availability of module 17 is kind of non-existent unless you're willing to download the Gerber and BOM files from the GitHub page. In fact, they've been uploaded in such a way that it makes it extremely easy to upload these to JLC PCB. And from there, you can get them made yourself. Now, I believe there is a minimum order, but if you can organize a group buy with friends or maybe club members, then it could work out quite cheap. Now, I'll be reviewing and testing module 17 in the very near future. So the module 17 provides M17 support to your radio, but what about if you wanted to use your computer instead, i.e. connected to your radio? Well, that's available by using a TNC, and there's already a couple on the market which support that. You've got the DigiRig Mobile and the MobiLink TNC. Now I'll be featuring the DigiRig Mobile TNC soon, connecting it to my FTM300, and then using a piece of software called M17 RTX GUI, to control the radio's PTT and audio in and out. Now this is a great cheap solution to get started using M17 via RF, and most likely you'll already have a radio that supports this in your shack. Now lastly, there is a custom firmware called OpenRTX, which supports the MD380, RT3S, and of course module 17. Now it just so happens I had an RTS3 in the cupboard, and luckily on the Open RTX website, there's some instructions on how you upload the custom firmware and then perform some hardware modifications. Yes, the RTS3 needs to have some small hardware modifications for the M17 feature from Open RTX to work. 
Now, obviously, if I mod the RTS 3 to support M17, then I'll need something to talk to via RF. So I modified my MMDVM modem to support M17 too. Now, more about that in a moment. Let's take a brief look at how I modified my RTS3 to support M17. So first up was to disassemble the radio. The modding instructions are quite good and cover every step of that modification. So taking the radio apart to get to the main board was actually quite easy. Now I'm not gonna lie, performing these mods were quite tricky as it involved removing some surface mount components and running some link wires. Now using a microscope with a camera and display really helped working on these tiny components. Now I eventually got there and it was time to put the radio back together. And once it was back together, it was time to flash the open RTX firmware. Now using the same firmware uploader software and the same cable as I would with the original firmware, I put the radio into DFU mode by holding the PTT and the function button just above while powering on. Now when it's in DFU mode, the display will stay blank and the top status LED will alternate between green and red. Now at this point, I just downloaded the firmware from the software on the computer. Once downloaded, I can then go into the open RTX settings to configure things like date and time and of course my call sign. On the RT3S with open RTX, you will lose DMR currently, but you can use FM. So any repeaters that you had programmed in for FM should still be there and should work. And one thing to know is that the original CPS can still be used to program memories. However, you can only do this with the original firmware installed. When switching over to the open RTX firmware by reflashing it again, all of your memories are still there and retained, but you can't use the CPS. As mentioned earlier, I now needed to set up my MMDVM hotspot to work with M17. So the first thing that I done was to change the default PyStar dashboard to the WCCHP PyStar dash. Now, not only does this look better in my opinion, but it also offers great support for M17. I'll just follow the instructions detailed on the W0CHP website to install that new dashboard. Now, obviously I will link below. The particular MMDVM hat that I have is the HS underscore hat and the current release firmware version is version 1.5. However, M17 support was introduced in version 1.6, but this has not been made into the releases page as of yet. So you need to compile this yourself and does take a little bit of time. And instructions on how to compile the firmware and then flash it to the attached hat can be found on the GitHub site. Now I'll link below as always. Now remember this is for the hat that I have and I didn't investigate any other types of MMDVM hats, but this does support the popular ZUM spots, etc, etc. Yeah, I don't know how I did it, but <laughs> you know, for, for doing a lookup online like it does, uh, I, I think it's the uh, QRZ servers must be. Anyway, they've got those things tuned. This is M0 DQW, Mike 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey, testing M17 via the RT3S, modified RT3S. This is uh, M0 DQW, testing the audio from a modified RT3S using M17. M0 DQW, over, over. This is M0DQW, M0DQW, using the M17 RTX GUI via DigiRig Mobile, which is connected to my FTM300. This is uh, M0DQW testing. Testing, testing. M0DQW. Well, there we go, guys. A brief look at M17 and the multiple ways in which you can use this free and open source digital codec on ham radio. Now, things are always progressing with M17, whether it's open RTX support for different radios or new compatible hardware. If you like to tinker and experiment with ham radio, especially digital comms, then this project is right up your street. M17 and OpenRTX both have their own Discord servers where you can talk with like-minded people, including the hardware and software developers. You can find the Discord server links on their websites, which I'll link below.
Now I'll have more M17 videos coming shortly where I'll show you how to use the DigiRig Mobile for M17 and then the Module 17, which changes your existing 9600 board compatible radio into a portable M17 solution. Anyway, until the next video, guys, stay safe. Thanks for watching and maybe speak to you on M17.